Today's April 12th. The Bucks split the series with the Tigers. Not without some drama in the end. But hey, it's Friday. Let's talk some baseball. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh and I'm joined as always by my brother Jake. What's up, Jake? What's up, Jake? What's up, Jake? What's up, Jake? Hey man, what's going on? Ah, <sighs> what a day. You know, I usually it's a late night for us here, Thursday night. I usually don't go for soda late night, but we've got the Henry Winers just feeling it, Jake. Yeah, you're a lot of Mountain Dew for the podcast. Pretty consistent with that, yeah. That's your, you know, caffeine. all the time or podcast drink? I mean, driving and podcast. Okay. Dinner. I do a lot of Mountain Dew. <laughs> I'm going to try to get my life together starting next week, so we'll see what happens. Dinner, lunch, little afternoon snack. <laughs> <laughs> First thing I do when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> I don't do coffee. I do Mountain Dew. No, I, I mean, I, I do, do Monster do Energy, so. I do all water most of the day, and then in the evenings is usually when I drink soda. I got you. But soda. <laughs> Can fit a six-pack of soda in there. Uh, series split with the Tigers. We're going to talk about those. Uh, it is our Friday episode. First one of the season. Real quick. Yeah. Did you get to, did you catch the eclipse? Yeah. 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 What did you think? Real that's, quick. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean Keely liked it. I so at. I was in. Yeah. Well, but you weren't in there, right? We were in totality. We were in like there was a 97%. Really? Yeah. Where were you? Logan, Ohio. Oh no, that's right. You were still up here. Yeah. Yeah, you were there. I guess it was it, oh, I see. Yeah. It was a little bit over, wasn't it? I totally yeah, forgot that like you yeah. were up, you were still up here. Yeah, I was like, it was in Waco, Texas. You ain't anywhere near there. <laughs> <laughs> no, they 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 couldn't even see it down here. It was so cloudy that day. Oh yeah, and it was only like a seventy percent. Yeah, you know, I um, man, I did not. I I just wasn't expecting. I kind of forgot about it, but I, I did get it like a cool shot. My phone would not take good pictures. Yeah, that's cool. So it was pretty cool. Zoomed in. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we I posted that you saw the post with the Eaton Park cookie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good. Katie thought of that one. We ran with it a little bit, just went out and did the, the Eaton Park cookie. We were like, well, that's, that's pretty funny. Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's do yeah. that. So, um, yeah, I told I told everybody. Uh, so because you were out camping and at, at the cabin and all that stuff, I told everybody about me getting Uncle Sam's too. Yeah, you know, little uh, Good you know, stuff. got my rounds. Awesome. Anyway, uh, Friday Friday episodes are back. Get you guys some some midweek. I guess not midweek. Some weekend pirates talk, as yeah. if there's not enough of it out there. But there's not any of us, so let's go. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be here as much as I can on these ones. Yeah, I mean, listen, we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Whatever you can yeah. be here for and we'll rock and roll. We're gonna yeah. keep these ones a little bit shorter. We said that last year, and then we recorded every one of them over fifty minutes. <laughs> so we're gonna try we're gonna to actually s- try this. We're gonna this try year. this yeah. this year. We're gonna try to <laughs> Keep these ones a little bit short. If you if we run out of time on this one and you feel like you want to hear more, go back and listen to Mondays. Yeah. It's really not, you know, that irrelevant. We try not to talk specifically about the games, but about the situations. And so we're going to keep doing that. We There's a lot of places you can get game recaps. Um, You know, we're just going to, we're going to talk some baseball. Listen, I had a, this has been a fun day for me earlier today. I was on the fan forum with Gary and Jim. So if you guys didn't get to hear that live, go check out the Pirates Fan Forum. Um, 
if you, I, I mean, it's, if you're Twitter, I retweeted everything. If you're, you know, if you don't know where to get it, um, I think it's pretty, pretty much out there. Look, just look it up. Pirates fan form. Uh, had a great time. I always like talking baseball with those guys. And, uh, so it's pretty fun, but here we are second one of the day. Yeah. And in between the pirates lost the baseball game. <laughs> So we're going to talk about that game, even though it's not the Tigers series, even though we're in the Phillies, we're going to kind of talk about the Phillies series a little bit too. So um, a lot to talk about in just a very little amount of time mm-hmm. because there was some drama this week. And I mean, I just get, let's get right into it. But the first thing I want to talk about, uh, we'll go in chronological order, I guess, in, in, a, in a sense, but Mitch Keller, I talked about it on Sunday about another bad start and basically said, he's going to throw Monday. Let's see what the start looks like. I'm not worried yet. And I believe I said, and you you can check the audio. I believe I said, if he comes out and he throws well against Detroit, I just need to see one more. And I'm saying, let's just forget about the first ones. Yeah, that's fair. You know what I'm saying? I I want to see back to back good starts. He's going to start Sunday against Philly. So we're going to see, you know, he did well against, he did very well, right? Nine strikeouts, um, did very well. So all good signs from the Mitch Keller front. He lowered the cutter usage, which is everybody was talking about, like all the cutter. He lowered the cutter usage. He got better results. Uh, Overall, good start for Mitch Keller. Good bounce back start. Get him going. If we can get Mm -hmm. Keller going, the way that Jones is going, and we'll talk a little bit about that again. And then Skeens comes up like, guys, you've got a dangerous, like, you've got a dangerous rotation a little bit. Hey, let's not even sleep on Martin Perez. Right. And we'll talk about his start here in a minute. But let's not sleep on him right now. It's effective. Yeah. Reynolds hit his 100th homer. Uh, That was actually, was that Monday or Tuesday? I don't know. 100th. It was Monday because I think. Mom and dad were at that game. Okay. 100 career homers. You know what I mean? That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. Congrats to you. Um, he, he, they, they talked to him on MLB Network, and of course, you, you got the brown. Yeah, I, I was happy to get it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> if you couldn't tell. <laughs> um, Chapman, big moment. Big moment. Monday night, bases loaded, one out, mows two guys down, basically makes that poor kid making his Major League debut not want to play Major League Baseball anymore. (laughs) It's like, this is my first Major League game, and I have to face Araldus Chapman. And then after he embarrasses you, I I don't want to say embarrass, he just struck him out, right? Yeah, right. After he strikes you out, he stares stares (laughs) you down. And he's probably like, he looks back at him, and he's just probably thinking, you can imagine that things running through his head like, yeah, I mean, I didn't stand a chance. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. seems like there is that kind of feedback from these guys when they're facing Chapman right now, uh, like Jazz and Tim Anderson, who actually smiled about it. Um, but this kid was just like, he's like, dude, I'm just trying to stay here. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but no, it was it was a big moment. And I think probably one of those things where it, you had a lot of people really on that, on the on that train, on the on the Araldus Chapman train, going into the next night. Yeah. Um, what was the story of Game Two? Eddie Olivares, two home runs. No. <laughs> <laughs> How about Martin Perez? Gem. Eight innings, got yeah. to hundred pitches. Jake, I know you're old school as I am. Did you want him going out for the for the ninth? I was driving. So I, I don't mean that. Watch but that right game. now, do you? So for me, it's a lot of looks. It's a lot of All visuals. Right. That's fair. And and so I can't really make a call by looking at paper. I understand. I was like, dude, I'm talking about right now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's for me a lot of it. It would be, what's he look like? Looked, so I mean he he looked yeah. fine, right? He he looked he had his command, he was throwing all the stuff, everything was good. But he got to 100 pitches. 
Mm-hmm. Early in the year. Early in the year. He didn't have a shutout. He didn't have a no hitter. And I think even this early in the year, he's gone, even if he has a shutout, to be honest with you. And we're going back in time a little bit. We're going to try to not use hindsight. Mm -hmm. We know what happened in the ninth inning. We're going to talk about that. Right now, I want to talk about Martin Perez because there is a conversation about whether or not he should have just gone out there. I think that conversation mostly happens because of what happened in the ninth. Yeah. I think if that's a one, two, three inning, we win three to one and everybody's happy, we don't even talk about it. Right. I think it's just a thing. And I think in hindsight, when you look back at that scenario, that situation, you're going to look at it and you're going to say, we've got an elite closer. Let's get this thing out of here. Let's take a day off. We're done. Apparently, Chapman from pitching two days in a row was not available either way. For those of you who already weren't believing in David Bednar, we talked about David Bednar's last blown save. Three blown saves is three blown saves as we move into that, right? I guess. Right. Uh, right. Well, to finish the thing about Martin Perez, I think it's a fair discussion to have. I really do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, what was it? What did he throw? Four pitches in the eight, in the eighth inning? Something crazy. Right, it was like some. I don't. I don't know if it's actually four, but he didn't throw a lot of pitches in the eighth inning. Okay, I'm actually going back to it so I can look at it because for me, it's worth it. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to his eighth inning. I got to scroll past the ninth first. Might take a minute. Yeah. Okay, that's us. Here we go. Javi Baez, one pitch fly out to Sawinski. And then Jake Rogers, okay, so he had a six pitch at bat. So you got seven pitches. Oh, and then you had a single, three more, and then you had three more. So like he got his way up there, and it was a fly out, a single, a ground out. Exit velocity 92. I guess I should even look at that. Was a hard hit. So the fly out to Jack Swinski was hit 97 and a half miles an hour. The single was hit 92. The other fly ball was 92. And the can of fly out was at 93. They hit the ball kind of hard off of it. Yeah. It's still a fair argument. You want to see your guys go out there and finish the game. I just think you, you go to Bednar. You yeah. close it down. Now let's go to let's go to Bednar now, because the outing before that, uh, you look back at the game and you watch his outing, and I think it was just the one before that. He gave up the home run to blow the save. Yeah, and it was a splitter up in the zone, not a good pitch, right? And it was mm -hmm. a command problem. It was like generally the only pitch that didn't look fine. Mm hmm. I thought the rest of his outing was strong. Yeah. And so I don't have... I know it was a blown save, but we ended up winning, right? And mm -hmm. and really, it just... it. it I didn't have that feeling like he's not there. Like, he, it, for me, it felt like he's still throwing spring training innings. He's going to miss a pitch every once in a while, but you generally should be able to get away with it. And it's like, that's unfortunate that he blew two saves this early. You hope it gets better from here, right? Yeah. And instead of getting better, I mean, it all just fell apart. He had no command on any of his pitches, it felt like, especially the curveball. Really which, bad. Yeah, which he usually just, you know, loops in for a strike whenever he wants. Right. And Stephen Brault basically broke it down as soon as the game was over. Oh, his hands are too high. He's playing catch up the whole time. It just seemed like it was a mechanic things. It was a mechanics thing. And that's all there is to it. I don't know if he's 100% right, but I mean, it checked. It checked It checked out. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there like, well, geez, if he's figured it out already, then Oscar Marine, uh, Gary said on the show, I like the way he said it. He was sitting in the dugout, like 
he already knew it. You know what I'm saying? Like the pitching coach is already sitting there antsy saying, we got to fix this. Like, I'm sure he already knew what he was doing. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, I totally, I buy that. Right. I know that they were going and, and essentially, and I said the same thing on the show earlier today. Um, do I go with Bednar moving on? It all depends on what happened from the time that game was over through that off day. If they felt like they understand why, then put in the work and fix it. If it is a mechanics issue, right, then just fix it. If it's just I'm not sharp yet, I feel like that would be a reason to say maybe we're going to check our scenarios and we might use Chapman in certain scenarios. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And, And like dealing with mechanical things, they're usually not that difficult to fix, especially for somebody who's a major league pitcher. Like you're, you're going to say an elite hey, one. Yeah. An elite at that. You're right. And you're going to basically tell him this is what's going on. Cool. Um, I don't care where these next few pitches go. I'm just going to think about that aspect of the mechanic. Like in a bullpen. Like in a bullpen. Yeah. Yes, not, yes, in a game. not in a game. Yeah. Not in a game. No <laughs> way. Just wanted to no clarify. Way. Just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> you give him a couple days off unavailable for two three days whatever that way he can throw a couple good bullpens where he can go max effort you had a built-in day off already right right and then you know he works on that for say 10 10 pitches just that alone like just thinks about that and then he's like okay and they're like all right that looks a lot better i'll throw your pitches and it should be that quick and he doesn't really have to think about it anymore hmm you know what I mean? And then it just, then he starts just throwing. Mm. It's, it, pitchers are weird, man. So, you know, if that's all it is, uh, Shelton said before the game today, if we're in a situation, I wouldn't feel nervous to go with Bednar. Showing confidence in your guy, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a problem with it, even though on Tuesday, in the heat of the moment, I said, I'd go with Chapman for a week. And work Bednar back into his role. But at just as like the situation goes, the further you get away from it, the more you're like, dude, we really blew this thing. I understand it's three blown saves, and that's not crazy. This is the first one we've lost, but mm-hmm. it's not crazy. You know what I'm saying? Especially when the last two were just like a couple pitches away. Yeah, You know what I mean? Just like a couple bad pitches. And in this one, just it kind of, it's like it all caught up with him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see that a lot in spring training. The third, fourth time out, something just goes completely wrong. And you almost like, you almost need that to happen in spring training. Or else you can't feel like you can go into the season feeling right. You have to have something go wrong. Well, and, and it's 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 just like those first two blown saves. There wasn't a lot going wrong. You don't really know what you what you need to fix. I just missed a pitch. Yeah, I missed a I pitch. I just missed a pitch. My splitter went up. That can happen at any time. And 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 how many times are they going to capitalize? Like they could right. have in any other game had he just fouled that splitter back and then got oh I missed one, which happens all the time. And then he just dials it in and none of that ever happens. And I'm not like, right. I, I want to be, I want to be clear. Like I'm, I didn't, I didn't come in here to try to make excuses. I'm just right. like, I'm analyzing this from further away than the heat of the moment. Yeah. Right. Now let's go to the heat of the moment. We're not going to go, we're not going to talk long about this. Cause I don't think you and I both have a lot. Um, the boo birds come out. You're at the game. It's late. It's the ninth inning. Not late in the day, obviously, because this was an early game. Yeah. But you've been there for a while. The Pirates got this thing in the bag. We're going to get a sweep. They're playing like they're winning games. Be careful with that because I don't think they're playing all that well. But they're winning games. 
we're doing, you know, the, the team's going good. We think we've got the makings of something that, that might actually have a little bit more run than what last year had. You know what I'm saying? So like you feel mm-hmm. like you're excited and all these things and you're upset at, at, at the fact that he's just non-competitive. You know what I mean? Yeah. The Boo Birds are going to come out and I think, and I've talked to so many people on this just trying to information, 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 right? Even Ryan, my Phillies fan friend. I still disagree on some of those points. <laughs> they legitimately think that booing helps. <laughs> Philadelphia is just a rare breed. Um, but the thing is, is like, it's in the moment, it's probably just not a big deal that they booed. I think when he comes off, there were some people making the argument they were booing Shelton. If they're booing Shelton, then when he goes and removes him from the game, you clap. You don't boo. Right. If you, you're you saying, yeah, you finally got him out of the game. Good job. No, that's not what happened. But anyway, uh, Rowdy Telez comes out. He says what he says. And you can have problems with what he said or not. To me, I think he said it for David Bednar, not for me and you. Right. I think he was just saying, I got your back. And if I say this, they don't ask you any questions about the booing because I said this. So if the media doesn't ask about the booing, then he can just talk about the pitching. And and David Bednar, who did obviously didn't ask him to do that, he appreciated the fact that his guy had him. However, Bednar was going to wear it the whole time. Yeah. He was going to wear it. I don't think that, I think it bothered him that it happened. Like, I think, you know what I mean? When he thinks back, I think it, I think it's going to bother him. But no, I mean, I think he's going to wear it. I think it's bothered him more that he didn't pitch well. Yeah. And that's just kind of the way I feel about it. Um, I know what Rowdy said, and I know that prideful people are going to say, you've, you have, you're not a Pittsburgher. Shut up. But that's your pride talking. Um, he lives there now. He got hired by somebody there, and he moved there, in, in a sense. So mm-hmm. I don't really know how I feel about it. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. He's standing up for his teammate. I just right. That's it. He's standing up for his teammate. He's just letting him know we got your back. We're gonna get you back on track. We believe in you, and I I think I'm there for it. It's good leadership. I, it really wasn't meant for you. I mean, maybe there was some of it that was, but I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's. I thought to myself, Kutch and David Bednar are off limits. You don't boo those guys. Yeah, and I, and I think I hear a lot of comps about like the Trey Turner thing in Philly, and I just think it's just two opposite things. Yeah, it's different. That in order for in order for the pirate fan base to do that for Bednar, it's when he comes in the game, not when he's exiting the game. They didn't cheer for Trey Turner when he struck out. Uh, well, no. I'll, they I'll even go back to this, Jake. Bat. When did they do that? It wasn't the tenth game of the season. No, it was a while. It was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah You're talking yeah, about yeah. into May or whatever. Yeah. Give him some time. This yeah. is a long season. I think. I think it was just. I think it was a lot too early. And I want to move to the next part here because I, I really just don't want to. I don't want to dwell on it because I think that it's yeah, behind us. I think, yeah, I think maybe too. if Rowdy doesn't say anything, I don't think it even gets the play that it got. I think everybody argues there's a day off and then we just play the Phillies. And it's not a thing. You know what I mean? So anyway, this kind of a thing happened because your team is winning games. Mm-hmm. If we were 3-10, and 10, I just think that it's not a thing. I don't know about that. Or five and five. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a thing. If it's five. I think it is. If I this think is if you're the five tw- and five and, you're, and you've had three blown saves, I think it's more likely to happen because you could be better if you weren't blowing games. Yeah, but you expect it. If this is Not- the 2021 Pirates, you're sitting there saying, yeah, I mean, we knew what this was going to be anyway. Yeah, but at the same time, if you had the games won with an all-star closer... Well, if it was 2021, he hadn't made an all-star game yet. It's not, it's not your point. <laughs> that wasn't your point. You know that. 
<laughs> my my point is, I think that if if you're not winning, I don't think there's as much at stake. If you're not a see, good I team, just, I just but 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 ah, see, I, th- I think there's more at stake because if you're not winning because this guy is blowing saves, you have. Well, this was the first one they've lost because of it. So, but that's what I'm saying. But if you're not winning games, oh yeah, they would have lost those, those two other two games. blown saves. I don't think so. You though. know what I'm saying? I think it's not a thing. I think that because of the fact that you're that you think you have a chance, that that you have a problem with it. That that's that's fair. And maybe some of those people, and I, and I, maybe and some agree, of those people who are going to boo, that are going to boo their hometown guy, maybe they're not even there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with what you're saying, but I don't. I agree with what you're saying about it being a big deal because we're winning. But I don't agree with the fact that you think it wouldn't be a big deal if we were losing. Because I think if we were losing, it'd be because of these blown saves. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, anyway, I, 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 yeah, I tend to think that this wouldn't have been a big deal if we stunk. As big of a deal as it was, or as it is. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Because we're not going to agree on that. <laughs> All right. We're not going to agree on that one. Um, where was I going next then? Phillies. Just going right into Phillies? I, I think we were done with the Tigers We're done with all that? Okay, so let's go into Philly. Um, Jared Jones. Dude, he's, he's legit. He's legit. So... It's- uh, an, again, gets a loss, but again, threw really well. Yeah. I mean, I was just sitting there. I, I actually got a chance because I was supposed to have some uh, some uh, BP to the session today, but got canceled. But so I was able to just sit on the couch and watch the game. And dude, <laughs> he's real, man. He's real. It's not, oh, wait till he gets hit around a little bit and see how he reacts because... So far, he's given up, what, three home runs? Yeah, I think three home runs. Four. Four. Yes. Two more four. before two. today? No. Two in the, his last outing and then two in this yeah. game. And, like, but every all four home runs that were hit, he's come right back and got the next guy. Yeah. Like, he, he don't back down. And, and it's three of the four home runs he's given up, solo shots. Yep. Yeah. You ask any pitcher, as long as we're giving up solo shots, we have to score anyway. Solo shots don't kill you. Yeah. you. I mean, obviously, you don't want them to be a bunch. But, um, you know, hey, just to bring it up, uh, Dave Thomas on Twitter, uh, he actually asked this, asked this question I tweeted out today. And he said, what does Jones need to do to better limit the home run balls? Not sure this is answerable or not, but it seems like his only weakness right now. And I... More like what you're saying is the home runs, they're go- the guys are going to hit them. I mean, it's it's the game that's played now. Yeah, especially when you're talking about Philly. Mm-hmm. Um, in Philly. In Philly. But not only that, but, I mean, Baltimore's a stacked lineup, won 100 mm-hmm. games last year. Uh, so he's had two tough outings. Uh, and really... I mean, look at the rest of it. I mean, this guy's just, he's got so much swing and miss. Yeah. New record. What's the number now? 58? 58. Did he get another 20? No, that would have been, that would have been over 60. Because he had 20 in the first two, and he had like 14 or 15 whiffs today. Right? Yeah, he was at, I know at one point... He was at 52, which tied it, and then he ended up adding like six more before Jeez. his outing was over. So he was at his the new records, 58 swing and misses through your first three games. That's ridiculous. Uh, he passed Steven Strasburg. Steven Strasburg had 52. Uh, I forget what the other guy whose name was actually at the top of the list, only because he did it first. But I mean, 50, he's six more. Wow. And he's real, man. Uh, do you send him out there for the seventh? Like he, uh, so that's like, tricky. That's tricky because I've I've noticed that like in all of his outings, it seems to be around like pitch seventy to seventy five. He starts to lose his command a little bit right now, so probably not. Yeah, not against the Phillies. 
I think you take that into effect, into account as well. No I mean, walks. Six hey, innings, seven going, strikeouts, one run, no walk. He's going right after guys. I mean, he gets to a three one count and he's like, oh, okay, I'll flip this slider in there. What? You have 98 in the bag. You're going to flip the slider in there. And they're like <laughs> swinging over it like crazy. Like, it's because they're not expecting it. They're yeah. looking fastball and it just drops. <laughs> Yeah, he's the real deal. I mean, it's it's you know obviously unfortunate the game got away from him a little bit there. Um, he ends up getting tagged for three runs, and then Colin Holderman comes in and what what do you want, man? First outing out there just doesn't go well. I want right? him to catch the ball. Oh yeah, you know what? Take us through that sequence there because it wasn't just I mean Colin Holderman gave up a homer, but it wasn't just that right. Only one of those runs is earned. Yeah, he gave up a big, I mean, that ball's crushed. But anyway, <laughs> the, 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 the batter before that, <laughs> it wasn't cheap. Um, the batter before that hits the fly ball, and you you got another outfield miscue. We have to get this under wraps. You got uh, Eddie Olivares holding his arm up, trying to tell Taylor he's got it. But I don't know that I've seen his mouth move. I, I, I didn't look that closely either, but he's calling it. But yet he's drifting over very slowly. That's why so we Taylor's don't Taylor's probably like, Taylor's probably like, <laughs> see what you did there. Taylor's probably like, I don't know if he's going to get there or not. He's barely moving. And he's sprinting over. They just, it, it, Oliveris just kind of knocks it down with his glove. He gets the air. So if we look these two things up, we've got the one, the last time Jared Jones started, we've got the one in center with Reynolds and, and Taylor. And now mm-hmm. it seems like was an Oliveris was in right. Mm-hmm. So we've got another one where Taylor's going to his left. The common denominator is Taylor. Mm-hmm. Is this on him? I mean, if, if Taylor's calling it, everybody else has to move. The problem I have with this is like, did Taylor stop again? Not, did they run not into like each other? Did. Not like they kind of brushed up against each other would taylor have caught the ball taylor would have taylor could have caught the ball i don't say i don't want to say would have but taylor definitely could have caught the ball um but so if, could Oliveris. if so could have Oliveris. but if Oliveris just you know doesn't go over by the ball because taylor's calling it taylor catches it with ease the my question is is it, why is taylor stopping if taylor is a center fielder and he's calling for the ball then catch the ball. If so somebody Taylor, else gets in front of you or runs into you, it's their fault. I'm going to say this. One. If the center fielder calls off the catcher, the catcher moves. He yeah. has priority over everybody on the field. Mm-hmm. And we want to sit here and give Jack Swinski a hard time because he won't call the ball when he's playing center field. Then we have to give the same exact criticism to Taylor for pulling off and not going and catching the ball. He can't yeah, keep. He's he got an error that he threw away. He's just not played that well in center. And I know that the numbers say different. And I know that everybody wants to glorify his center field play, but these are these have all cost runs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. And it's I, I I know we were chatting before this. And you're like second week of the season. We're not. You know they need to play more. I get that, but they're also being paid to play. It's their job. They need to perform their job. Two weeks in, Don't you should say have those that. deep oh, crap. Somebody's not gonna do you can't say that playing baseball, do your job, and the only way you do your job is, is you, if you succeed. The hitter, the hitter has a job too. Yeah, so I'm not I saying I'm not saying any of that do your job stuff. I, I think it's this is a communication issue. It's not a this is more of right. a mental issue than it is a physical. I'll take physical errors any day. You know that. Yeah. Physical errors happen. This is baseball. You know, part I'll of get your job over is them, right. Yeah. Exactly. Part of part of your job is to get over the physical errors. The mental errors need to stop. Like this, this outfield communication needs this needs nipped. Like we need to fix it now before it gets even worse. Like going in hard. You can't we just you can't keep giving up runs because you can't talk to each other. Yeah. It's, no, I, I'm there, but but furthermore. I just want to say, like, the way you fix it is for the center fielder to catch the ball. He can't yeah. stop. 
So he didn't he didn't stop on this one. He he avoided a collision, but because Oliveris wouldn't stop and Oliveris cut in front of him, and then he kind of once Oliveris cut in front of him is when he kind of you know avoided just smacking into each other. He just yeah. avoided the big hit, and you know. I'm with you. Go catch the ball, and I get that. Yep. But if I also don't want you just running in and getting hurt either. No, call the ball, catch the ball. Let yeah. everybody else get out of your way. Yeah. And if they don't, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but if you're Michael Taylor, you don't know that because you're looking at the ball and you're planning on catching it. You don't need mm-hmm. to look at him. If you're calling it, catch the ball. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. And so, yeah, yes, if fair. you're saying it's a communication error, and I totally agree with you, and those kind of things, we, we just had a conversation about errors and defensive metrics, and this kind of stuff doesn't show up anywhere. It shows up as a double. You know what I'm saying? And it shouldn't. Not not this one. This one went in as an error against Oliveris. Okay, yeah. It was an E9. Yep, you're right. Because he actually but the, the it, other he one, hit it with his glove. So the, the one other, that it just dropped. Yeah, the that's other, not an error. Right. The other, the other two plays, the one in center field and the one with Sawinski and Alika, those go as hits. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't touch anybody's glove. Right. So the thing is, is specifically, specifically talking about Taylor, mm-hmm. and uh, and like this isn't my like. Hey, listen, I try to make sense out of everything. My goal in life is to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. I did it at work today. It backfired on me, okay? The point is (laughs) I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, and so let's try to give – and I was a center fielder, so I'm I'm a little more critical, just like you are about pitchers. And I – he it it wasn't even there for spring training hardly. Mm -hmm. They haven't worked together. You know what I'm saying? There is a little bit there that – um, that is passable in April in the first two weeks or so of the season with uh, with you not having any time, right? My only thing is that if you're the center fielder and you're calling the ball, then catch it. When he stopped and just to avoid running into Brian Reynolds, that's the problem. Like, yeah. catch the ball. Catch the ball. You're going to be fine. They neither of those plays. I, I actually can't speak for the one today because I did miss it. The, the the play with Reynolds and him would not have hit each other. They would not have ran into each other near as hard as Sawinski ran into the wall in left field. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? They're gonna have to fix that. And that wall didn't give as much as those human bodies would. So uh, all I'm saying I, I'm is I'm surprised that, that wall didn't break. I just when I'm watching the game, it, sure, Taylor glides after fly balls. It's fine. Anybody catches those fly balls. I just haven't seen a play he's made yet that I thought Sawinski wouldn't have made that play. Unless it yeah. was like Sawinski not calling the ball and pulling up and letting somebody else go after it cuz he does do that. He's too he's too passive for center field, right? He needs to take yeah. command. And that's fair. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's a fair assessment of what Jack Swinski does in center field and why you need a center fielder out there. And then we go get a guy who won a gold glove, and unfortunately, he does the same thing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Except he might be calling it and then stopping instead of catching it. <laughs> so, I don't That's know. crazy. I don't know. I, to me, it's it's just one of those things that it's frustrating because... The fact that he has a track record means we write him off as we give him a pass. Those are both his fault. And the throw into the stance when Bednar was pitching didn't have to do that. It was a terrible throw. (laughs) And you would even think, I'll even say this, you would even think that if anybody is going to stop that ball, it's Key Brian Hayes. That doesn't change the fact that it was a terrible throw. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like you, you cost us the game. I mean, mm-hmm. not really, because he didn't hit and walk a guy <laughs> but and give up the hit. But you know what I'm saying. Like, if I yeah. was in center field, I would have felt like that was my fault. Right. So I, I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of sloppy play. And I'm giving mm-hmm. a lot of people a pass. And this isn't just the Pirates. I'm seeing it everywhere. I mean, we won a game because of half of an amazing play 
the other half was sloppy. And mm-hmm. the, you know, the Orioles didn't play great defense that whole uh, series either. And it's it's a lot of teams right now in April who, when the game speeds up, you have a hard time keeping up. I mean, the Yankees were the other team that had that were that was flirting to be the first team with to ten wins, and they had just as many errors as we did. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's sloppy. But the fact that the Pirates haven't played a single clean game yet kind of makes you feel pretty good about them. Yeah. Just imagine how they do if they actually clean it up. And there's no reason to think they won't. Right. We had another question here, didn't we? Let's get out of here. This is uh, an interesting one from Noah. And I'm not even sure why we're asking it, but I said ask questions. If you had to get rid of one for good (laughs) out of Cruz, Reynolds, and Hayes, who are you getting rid of? I mean, easy buttons, Cruz, right? I mean, the other two are locked up. The, The other two are basically finished products. Now tell me how ridiculous it would be if they got rid of Cruz. Right. Yeah, it'd be crazy. You're not, I didn't, it's a game, right? He's asking you to really answer it. Yeah. What, what, it, what would your actual answer be if? I mean, it's Cruz. He's the only one that's not. Well, proven. if it, oh, okay. That was a different, okay. You went somewhere different. Yeah. I thought you were yeah, going to say I mean, the only one just, hasn't signed. Yeah. The other, the other two are proven products. They're almost finished products. Cruz has got a little bit of, I mean, of course the potential's there, obviously. Why I wouldn't get rid of him, but <laughs> right, real- yeah, I don't know. I guess I'd have to say, I, man, I don't know. You don't want to get rid of any of them. I guess if I'm picking no. one, it's Reynolds. Really, I like the ceiling, man. It's fair. It, th- there's no right answer. They're all wrong. Oh, they, yeah, they're all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're all wrong. <laughs> um. Let's swing the bat a little bit with two strikes tomorrow, the rest of the yeah. weekend. Yeah, let's swing the bat in general. I didn't average. expect to be spicy tonight. No. We average over five runs a game. We only score one tonight, or last night. Yeah. Let's hit the ball. Let's hit the ball, get some wins. Uh, we lose one more. That's called a losing streak. I don't want to see that. <laughs> Let's go, Bucks. <laughs> Let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, Cannonball coming, and let's go, Bucks.